I, again, got asked to cover this thing here. So I'm going to be talking about that today. Hi guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Failtech, and I'm going to be explaining to you why and what happens when the 6P goes into a boot loop. Now, first thing I want to say is that my friend Callum recently got a 6P. He has some battery issues by the fact that the battery just literally doesn't last that long. Probably needs to get a replacement. And my friend Harry has a problem, which is quite common, where the phone will shut down at around 30% battery life and not boot up until you've charged it all the way. This is a separate issue to what I'm going to be talking about today so unfortunately I can't cover that although if you guys want to want to see that comment and I will cover that in a separate video but they're two different problems and I don't want to confuse people by putting both in the same video so what is the problem well to this day we do not know and it's similar to the Samsung S7 Edge problem big companies like this just tend to, to blame someone or just disregard it entirely like the the touch disease situation or the S7 Edge pink line situation they just they don't like to talk about it and companies that do like to talk about it I do feel would probably be better in the books of the consumer because then they actually give some information. However, because the Nexus is made by Google and Huawei, it's it's not a Google phone, it is a Huawei phone with Google software on it. The one problem these two companies have, they're arguing, they're, they're basically blaming each other. And there's a class action lawsuit that was active in like several states in America. And I mean, they got sued for quite a lot of money. The main thing is it could be software because there are fixes online or potential fixes online that are basically firmware upgrades and firmware changes and ROM changes and all these kinds of things that are very clearly software. And that would mean that Google would be at fault, but Google is blaming Huawei and Huawei is blaming Google. Now, there are other reports to suggest that this could be a hardware uh, problem because even people who have tried these firmwares are not getting anywhere, which could also indicate that it's two different problems or many different problems, although it's very unlikely to be several different problems. It could possibly be the Snapdragon 810 system on a chip because those things are renowned for being unreliable using a lot of power and producing a lot of heat and a lot of these fixes in the firmware actually disable some of the cores on that 8 core system on a chip and that sounds crazy I know Snapdragon 810 running on 4 cores but apparently reports suggest that in Geekbench scores and Benchmark scores they're actually getting a higher score with 4 cores than they are with 8 cores due to the fact that it's just simply not thermal throttling which is when a CPU will hit a, a temperature and ramp down the clock speed thus affecting performance and if you guys want to see a video on that let me know but there are plenty of videos like from Linus Tech Tips about that kind of thing and it's really annoying because again a Snapdragon 810 is an 8 core system on chip and cutting basically half that away to give you similar or better performance is a bit weird and would definitely cost a lot less if they were just to implement a quad core system on chip like the Snapdragon 820. So how would you fix it? Well Huawei and Google will offer you a replacement or a fix if the device is under warranty. If it's not under warranty they just refuse to and they'll charge you 150 to 200 dollars which is about average for these kinds of problems where they simply blame the user and it's it's frustrating. I don't agree with it. I'm a reviewer, you know, I'm with you guys. I think it's terribly wrong that they get you to actually pay to fix a problem that they implemented, essentially implemented. It's not great, but it's a potential thing. And uh, if you guys want to buy a new phone, I just want to say again that Harry and Callum, neither of those guys had this problem with their 6P. And I had a 6P a year ago or two years ago, didn't have a problem with it, was absolutely fine. But the reliability of it and that kind of thing was perfectly fine. So it could happen to anyone. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting a 6P because of this. I mean, it could be a huge issue. The battery isn't amazing on those I mean those is great and it helps out but with the unreliable battery situation coupled with this situation I would just recommend steering clear of, of the 6p um, and there aren't many phones that you can go to that are actually around that era that have a decent reliability factor apart from maybe the iPhone 6 or 6s whichever one was out at the time it became more apparent that this was a problem around September of 2016 which is a bit weird because the the Huawei phone actually released before that but again it's one of those things it could just be a coincidence it's really difficult for me to give you a straight answer because there's nothing online that correlates it's all kind of jibber jabber and the most I can really do is collect up the most amount of information on a specific topic and try and give it to you guys again will this affect you probably not it's unlikely that it will but it could happen and the fact that it could happen spending 200 pounds on a phone is the reason that I can't recommend it same with the s7 edge I love that phone the s7 edge is my favorite phone of all time having in my opinion 
opinion, the second best screen, uh, one of the biggest batteries, amazing build quality, great cameras. Six piece, kind of similar. It's got a really good screen, really good set of speakers on that. Build quality isn't amazing as uh, proven by Jerry Rig everything. And it's a good, well-rounded device, but it does have these, these issues that mean that it's difficult for me to recommend it because I could recommend it, but a lot of you guys hated on me for recommending a phone that could break. Any phone could break. This Nexus 5 is horrendous for boot loops and stuff, yet I still recommend it because it's a good device, and it might not happen to everyone. So it's really pick your poison. You could end up with a perfectly good phone. Remember, Callum, Harry and I, uh, all bought from the UK eBay store, by the way, we all got a, a decent deal. We all got a phone that worked and wasn't amazingly bad. You know, it didn't have any glaring issues apart from Harry's one that, that has that early shutdown issue. Hopefully I've taught you something. I really hope I have because that's kind of why I make these, these stand in front of the camera videos. Please do like this video if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it. Please do subscribe if you're around here to never miss a video like this one or covering new phones. In fact, I will be unboxing an iPhone 6S soon so again that's pretty cool i'm actually yeah there, there are a few things that i want to talk about in that video that, that are kind of important and please do uh please do comment you know it really helps me out if you guys comment to each other help each other out do you guys have the 6p issue do you guys have the the 6p boot loop or the early battery shutdown issue or do you have an another issue that you, you want me to talk about because of course i'm looking through the comments i'm trying to cover anything that people want to see from me and yeah Right, next video we'll have a different set, a different location. Thank you all so much for watching. My name's been Ryan Thomas, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.